the last video, we discussed what 3D printing is, the key components of a 3D printer, and some tips on what to look for to help you decide what options are right for you. In this video, let's take a look at a few of the interesting, useful, and fun things you can do using a 3D printer. Let's get started. Let's say you've got an old drink bottle. In this case, it's Mountain Dew. And you want to repurpose it. Well, a great way to do it is to print one of these caps. Basically what you can do is screw that onto the end. You probably want to print this in ABS so it'll last longer, especially since you're going to most likely be using it outdoors. But you'll see right here there is a little hole. So what you'll do is you'll take this. Excuse me, Emma. And you'll install it right like that into the ground. And there you go. It'll water your plant for you. It'll slowly drip out until the entire bottle is depleted and gives you a great way of watering your plants. You can print up a whole bunch of these and use them all throughout the house, outside. In our kitchen, my wife was constantly losing the remote, so I built a little 3D remote holder from Thingiverse, printed that out, and now she has a place to put a remote control that is always there, handy and available. One thing that we had a lot of trouble with is these remotes were constantly getting lost in our sofa. So, 3D printed a little symbol here, just a piece of plastic that has our last name on it, and there you go. We have not lost a remote since. If you want to control your Fire TV, there you go. Put it back when you're done. Cable box, you're good to go. When you're done, set it back on there. Ha! Won't get lost ever again. After my daughter repainted her bedroom, she couldn't find the light switch. So, we reprinted one with her name engraved into the side of it. And now, here it is in her room. Yes, we still need to add a few screws to it, but it's still holding up just fine. Another thing we built here was this 3D printed cup holder. Very handy. So, oh, we've got a Ghostbusters logo up here on the wall of the arcade. We also have this giant Slimer. Ooh, yes, this was hand painted. It was printed in ABS plastic. It's pretty big. Uh, we added uh, an interesting look to it. Um, so he sits right here in our arcade for some weird reason. I don't know why we printed it. I guess I was bored some night and decided to, but hey, it's pretty cool. Over on the far wall, you'll see a bunch of little Space Invader characters. These were all 3D printed. See right here. Um, yeah, there's even some blockers down below. So yeah, that's what our arcade wall looks like. Here's another fun project that kids will love. I don't know what you call this thing. Uh, it's interesting though. Um, in here I've got a small silver ball. It was actually a little ball that my son used for his slingshot. You take this. It rotates around, goes through all the different slides here. I went ahead and put a few rubber feet on the bottom of it. But as you can see, a little ball rolls just great in here. You have this piece here, it's got a little triangular shape, and this piece here that matches. So when you turn this, 
it turns the thing. You can put that in there like so. And then turn it with your finger. We'll throw a ball in there. Turn it. There you have it. It's a fun little toy that'll keep your kids entertained for about 10 minutes. <laughs>you first get the 3D model off the printer, in this case there are a lot of supports and all of these supports have to be removed very cleanly. So as you'll see here, I'm going to go ahead and use my needle nose pliers to remove all the supports that you see. Uh, take your time, uh, try and add, you know, add a nice smooth finish to it. I also use clippers from time to time. It's very handy. Um, it, it'll help you you know, get the edges nice and smooth. Now once that's done, once you get it all cleaned up, then you want to apply some sandpaper, at least for this case, where we have a very small helmet looking model. Uh, we don't want to see any lines when we go to paint it, so we'll go ahead and, and sand it real good. Then we'll apply a coat of primer and paint. Uh, in this case it's white. Uh, give it a nice smooth finish and let it dry very good and once that's done then we'll take it off and we will set it up here and go ahead and do some hand painting uh, in this case I started out with black I highlighted all the areas that are black on the helmet and went ahead and painted those and then I switched over to gray and painted the gray areas and added some more detail. Once I was completely done, then I applied some uh, high gloss paint to it, spray paint, and uh, made it a nice glossy finish. And this is the result. It looks really, really good. Very smooth. You don't see any lines in the print. Uh, I was very impressed with this particular print. It's probably one of the better ones. Here's an example of how 3D printing can be used for building a larger scale uh, type of costume. This is uh, the power droid from Star Wars. I believe it was uh, episode four. Um, what you see here are two big plastic tubs that are put together, uh, you know, the open ends. There's a bottom section that's cut out up under here uh, where my son can get inside of it. Um, and these are gutters that we found at Lowe's. Um, the shoes are a foam material. Um, all of these pieces that you see here, they were pieces that um, were cut out using blender, sized up, and then placed here on the, on the tubs using E6000 glue. I've got a more detailed video on my channel. I'll put a link above so you can see it if you're interested. But all of these pieces here were 3D printed. Um, I believe this is one we had laying around. It was an antenna for something, so we just used that. Um, but yeah, it turned out pretty good. The pieces that came off the, uh, the model, this is a small scale version of the model. Um, what you can see there, uh, these plastic covers, they were custom made and used a transparent material. Uh, so that the LED lights would, you know, kind of disperse the light across the entire uh, plastic area. So all of this was 3D printed. These blocks where the LEDs come through, they were 3D printed. This was, um, this actually came from, um, I don't remember what it came from. Anyway, um, that gives you a, a good glimpse of it. We took this model and we cut off the different pieces that we wanted uh, using Blender and then 
uh, like this piece and this piece. Uh, we took all those pieces off and sized them up and used the E6000 glue and put it on there. This is actually a piece of metal, I believe it's a wire conduit, a um, bunch of E6000 here, some hot glue, but it, I think it's mostly E6000. Um, so yeah, this is just an example of one of the, I mean, you could create anything with a 3D printer. And this is a good example of anything you can print with a 3D printer. Um, so there, I hope you enjoyed that. Another thing you can 3D print is the mold for Olaf in this case, uh, or one of the minions. There are several others you can create your own. Uh, basically how we did it is we took some silicone and put it into a plastic cup or uh, a red solo cup and mix it with cornstarch. And when you mix it up with cornstarch, the cornstarch will allow it to dry a lot faster. So you want to put maybe, you know, three parts silicone to one part of cornstarch. Mix it up real good. You can add uh, any kind of paint that you want. In this case, I used watercolors for the uh, Dave the Minion. And then you mix it up and you use a, uh, a popsicle stick to smooth it over and fill each side of the mold. Stick it together, tie it together with rubber bands, and in about two hours, you have this. Here's another 3D printed project that you might like. Um, basically, I built a case for the electronics that went into this gal that is tied in over Bluetooth to Alexa. So whenever Alexa talks, this face moves. Let's give it a try. Alexa, tell me a joke. How did the kangaroo steal the car? She jump started it. Alexa, what time is it? It's 12.14 p.m. Alexa, what's the forecast for tomorrow? Tomorrow in harvest, there will be some sun and thunderstorms with a high of 89 degrees and a low of 71 degrees. Another example of a 3D printed uh, robot. This one is an actual robot that my son and I built last year, uh, or we started on it. We're not quite done. Uh, but basically, these are the insides to it. Greetings. I am the JL-1000 robot. Primary motor found. Sensor module found. Speech module found. Basically what it does is it's got a Raspberry Pi as the main computer. Then there's, uh, I believe, two or three Arduinos, uh, Arduino Nanos that are controlling the servos, and uh, it's got a boatload of sensors. Right. It's got a smoke sensor, uh, temperature sensor, humidity. Uh, the battery pack is over here. Uh, this was custom 3D printed right. to house the speaker. Uh, it's got motor controllers that are controlling the motors. It's all cell phone controlled. If you want to learn more about this robot and see it in action, I'll put a link above so you can see it. But the main thing I want to point out is that all the skins for it were 3D printed. All of this is ABS plastic. Uh, it took probably uh, two or three days to print all the pieces to it. Uh, it is modular. I can pull this off. I can pull all of these pieces off fairly easily. Uh, I think there's only like two screws holding in some of the main pieces. Uh, this piece is uh, stuck to this one. But anyway, yeah, it's pretty cool. We really enjoy it. And hopefully one day, not too far off in the future, this robot will have a hand too. Right. If not this robot, we may have to build a slightly larger robot. Um, in order to hold the, the weight of the hand, because it is going to be a little bit heavier. So, right. another example of 3D printing. Dave Austin, astronaut. A man barely alive. Gentlemen.
We can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. Here's another fun 3D printed project. It's a little bit more advanced. Um, is a 3D printed robotic hand. As you can see here, all the fingers are 3D printed. And right now the servo's got it kind of tightened up. Uh, but they're all 3D printed fingers. Uh, it uses this uh, elastic band that comes in through the back and it's tied off here and I seared it with uh, a soldering iron. See what kind of hand motions it can make. Here's a little control board that I put together using an Arduino Nano. We could take this. Okay, there's our OK symbol, our open hand. It's amazing what you can do with a 3D printer. You can create just about anything you can imagine. Some things you might have to augment with a little bit of technology. Hey, but that's, that's what it's all about. You can create anything you can imagine. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it showed you all kinds of interesting things that you can do with 3D printers. Really, the only limit is your imagination. So, this is the second video in a multi-part series on 3D printing. If you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button. That way you won't miss any future episodes on 3D printing or anything else that we release here on Wagner's Tech Talk. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you soon.